here, ladies and gentlemen, founder of Mountain Partners. Please welcome Cornelius Bursch. Hey, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you for being here today. So thank you very much for having me here. And um, I will talk about a little bit about the digitalization and the missed future we have here in Europe. Um, I had three lives so far, so I never worked for anybody. For the last 30 years, I'm an entrepreneur. I started actually 40 years ago at a flea market and uh, became an entrepreneur. I started a few unicorns myself and I was lucky to sell them at the right timing. And that is the reason why I live now here in Switzerland. I am Swiss. Uh, so it's not just for climate reason. I was also the second life when I sold my company. I was the entrepreneur of the year and in Europe and many other things. And then I thought I should go to Berlin and fix Berlin in politics. And I was very frustrated about it. So and I met a, a guy called Guido Westerwelle in a talk show. And then we said, let's do this together. And we started or we reinvented this liberal party. And we have the elections in Germany, as you know, perhaps on, on Sunday. So for the last 20 years, I was in charge for the election campaigns, for the digital election campaigns also. We were the first ones in Europe who really used Facebook and other things in order to have more reach for the, uh, for the, uh, to, for the voters. And then I'm a tech investor since 1997. Um, I just published a book about the missed future, why Europe is so far behind. So it's kind of really sad because like 20 years ago, I think we were in a different position. And now we hear from all the politicians and all the managers how well we do, we don't do well. And I will show you in a second why. The reason why this book is so good is because my co-author did 80% of the work and I only did 20% of the work. And this is an interesting guy. He's very controversial because he was the most successful manager in Europe, the best paid manager ever. He made a few hundred million as a manager, which is rare. And um, then he lost everything. So he was flying Concorde, he had a private jet, he was, uh, you know, he, he, he was the first investor of AOL, he wanted to invest 25% in Amazon and many other things. And then he lost everything. And 25 years ago, when I met him the first time, I thought, what an asshole. And uh, so we were both very alpha. And we, we, I always said, well, you are just an employee. And he looked at me and said, oh, but your stuff is so small. But now we, are, we really became best friends. And why? He lost everything. He lost his reputation because of tax cheating in Germany. He lost his money. He lost his family. He lost his health. He lost everything. But now, if you talk to him now, he's one of the most happy persons you could imagine. And the most funny flight we ever had was an economy flight for $99 from Beijing to Tokyo. I will never forget this, uh, this one. So this is, an, uh, this is very interesting to, to work with him for, since a few years. I did more than 400 tech investments in my life. I'm probably one of the most active or the most active tech investor uh, in Europe. And I, of course, I exited many uh, companies. The difference to other people, I use mainly my own money to invest. And those were my two companies I started myself. I also was the first investor of the Rocket Guys. And we started Lieferando. Kavak, you might know, but it's now a 14 billion uh, company. VFOX is a Zurich company, which is now at 6 billion valuation. Uh, and uh, this is an interesting Swiss company. It's actually a Russian. It's a, uh, he started his fourth rocket company now in Switzerland. And what we do is online delivery, or delivery within 90 minutes to any place on Earth. And we do this with a rocket. And uh, he got kicked out of Silicon Valley. He's Russian. And this, you will hear about this company a lot because it's Swiss, but it's also it's one of the fastest growing companies uh, I've ever seen. He's just hiring another 300 engineers here in Switzerland. This is the fastest growing uh, coffee company. We are starting one coffee shop a day. We want to start 10 coffee shops a day at the moment. I do this together with Delivery Hero and some others. But this is a picture we just got yesterday. This is our shop on the other side, and this is Starbucks here in, in front. So we like that very much. So we call it the Starbucks killer. Um, this is also a Swiss company, and this is involved in drones. So what we do is we deliver anything to your flat. So it can land at the, uh, at the wall of, a, of any flat. And uh, the team is amazing, the world champion in drone flying, the, the best uh, builder for drones in the world, plus the founder of the World Championship Association for drone flying. Those are the founders. So we see also in Switzerland, we find amazing uh, companies. So generally speaking, the digital revolution is underestimated. Still today, still people, I mean, you are digital people, but 
nevertheless, wherever you go, people just don't uh, uh, appreciate this digital revolution enough. And you can't hide. A lot of people, sometimes when I talk to big companies, they say, well, you know, that does not affect us. No, you cannot hide. It doesn't matter how old you are, you know, it will affect you eventually. And it, this shows you how big time we failed. I mean, when I started to talk about digitalization, I was really pretty much alone. But now look what, what happened, that all the big companies in the world are tech companies. So forget the old world, banks, insurance, all this will be over soon. In 10, 20 years from now, you will see this will not exist. I, st I said at a board meeting once at Deutsche Bank 20 years ago, well, you will not survive the next 20 years. I was wrong, but what's left is not worse that it survives. So it's really, really bad. So I was partly right. And now you see that all the largest companies in the world are tech. And if you look at uh, how, how, how much we hit by this, those are all German top companies combined are worth less than any of those single companies. And this is the most dramatic point behind it because they can refinance them so much cheaper. So if you're young now and, you're not, uh, and you want to become an entrepreneur or you want to work for something, but don't go in those old companies. They, this will be over. I mean, they, they failed big time. I mean, they show off, you know, when a CEO comes to and gives a speech, like this is what we have done. But nothing shows more how big time we failed. And why did we miss, we call it the missed decade. And it happened between 2000 and 2010, due to guys like me. I was a big entrepreneur back those days, and we screwed it up big times. Why? Because all the investors came in with a lot of money, and then the dot-com bubble bursted, and nobody in Europe wanted to, re wanted to invest in, in, uh, in tech startups. And all the, uh, the initiatives for digitalization stopped. And in America, they recovered much quicker. And this is called the lost decade. So the Neue Markt or other stock exchanges dropped, and what did we do in Europe? We wiped it out completely. There is no Neue Markt. If we would have stayed one or two years longer, it would have been much better. So who's responsible for this failure? And I think it's all of us. It's not just one person. So let's start with the managers. A manager, you know, I mean, he has a contract for four years. You cannot blame him. It takes eight or ten years until you see a success of a startup. I mean, all of you start, are starting companies, but the truth is it always takes much longer. If people would know how risky it is to start a startup, they would never start it. So, but at the end, um, you know, so managers are not doing much in order to improve the digitalization. They don't want to take any risk. They want to have the next contract. That's the only thing they're, they're keen for. And then our mentality, we are all so careful. And of course, the politicians, they only care for the next elections. I have been involved in this business. Trust me, they don't care about startups or digitalization. They just want to win the next uh, election. And why is it so important? All of you know how Monopoly works. And all those addresses on the streets are already occupied by Google or by Amazon, Alibaba, by Facebook. So for us, for us Europeans, only the train stations are left. And everybody knows with the train stations, you cannot win this game. So for sure, in the B2C space, we lost for sure. And also, by the way, there is no way of, of, of getting this back. And why, what did we observe? What phenomena did we observe in Europe? Well, first of all, it's a collective failure. Second, it's sugarcoating. People say it's not that bad. You know, it will be fine in the future. No, it's not. And it's quick. The, people just care for quick money. The investors, they just want quick money. The managers want quick money. They don't care if it's in six or eight or ten years. They want to, the next quarter. This is what is important for them. And then, of course, the conformity phenomenon. So we all do the same. We all swim, swim in the same direction. And then, then the temporal disconnect. That means the failures were 10, 15, 20 years ago, and now we see the results. We are scared of things. We are always afraid. Everybody is afraid. Oh, not just with our kids, but we as a society are too afraid to take any risk. And then this is a minister for economics in Germany. Uh, you know, he's dreaming of a European cloud solution. I mean, that's crap. I mean, we just heard about clouds, you know. I mean, why a government can do this? I mean, this does not really help us. Or imagine a European Facebook powered by Deutsche Telekom or Siemens. How ridiculous this is. I was approached many times by top politicians in Europe. They said, well, we have 40, 50 billion here to build a Facebook. It doesn't work like this. You need entrepreneurs. You need crazy people. Digital economy and society index, we are far behind in Europe. Uh, Switzerland is better than, than other countries, but that doesn't mean it's good. And now I'm wondering, where's all this money coming from? Germany has now a thousand billion because of Corona. 
but why is this money coming now? Why didn't we invest it before? And now we are 40% of the EU budget is still agriculture subsidies. I have nothing against farmers or agriculture, but is this the future? We should invest in AI, in virtual reality or something, but not in, in old business models. And can we do anything against Google, Facebook? Do we have to take them apart? Is this one way of doing it? I'm not a believer in it, but it is an alternative because they are too big, too powerful now. And then in Europe, we are between two superpowers, China and US. And you see what's happening with Huawei or Nord Stream uh, or other companies, like how difficult it is because there is no one Europe. And also for Switzerland, we, we, we need this Europe. I mean, there is no way, even if you are, represent a country like Germany, nobody cares about Germany. It's just too small. You know, only if your size matters in this field very much. And now what we do, we subsidize old business models. I mean, what does, why is Adidas getting four billion of subs, uh, subsidization for, for the Adiletten, for the shoes? I mean, this is not relevant for society. Why, why, and only two billion we put into startups in Germany. I mean, why are we not supporting this much more? Because we don't have a lobby. That is our, 11, 12 billion were pumped into Lufthansa. I mean, again, I like Lufthansa, but is it really that important? And then we have amazing universities here. We have ETH, we have St. Gallen, but most of the stuff which is developed there will never, will never come to the market. So we have to connect better the universities, uh, the politics, the big companies. You know, if you are a startup entrepreneur, try to get a, an appointment with a CEO of, let's say, Swisscom how difficult that is, but it should be on a regular base. Or who's traveling with the president of a country? It's always the big companies, but never startup entrepreneurs. So there's very little dynamic uh, in Europe. So we, the decisions are too slow, we develop products too slow, and we have to adapt for change. We need more agility, and if we don't become more agile, we will not make it. And this is a key industry of Europe, so it collapsed completely. It's not just COVID, not just diesel scandal. It is that they are so far behind in digital. And the traditional managers, the startups are unfair, but that does not help us, you know. It was back a long time the other way around, and now it's too late, actually, to win. And why do we have this dilemma for, for, large, uh, for large corporates? Because, first of all, they have no know-how in digitalization. Second, they have no strategy. They have short-term incentives. They're too slow. And then the management is too old. If you have bought people, or in the supervisory board, 60, 70 year old, and you have to develop products for 10, 15, 20 year old, then it does not work. You know, and my kids never touched a newspaper. My kids never watch normal television. They have Netflix or YouTube. So the world is changing, and I think those big corporates, they are just too slow for it. And the investors, those guys, they ruined our future. Why? They only invested in real estate because they care for their personal wealth. They inherited most of them the money, and what they did, they were careful, and let's do real estate, we don't do anything wrong. But, and they say startups are not professional. Of course not, just one out of 10 startups is really a rock star. So what, but it is a necessity. And, and this is a difference. This guy would be, um, you know, he would not be outside somewhere as a manager. They would probably either put him in jail or in a, some care home for, because he's so crazy. And here, on the other hand, but we need people like him. And then you have the normal manager. He's doing a decent job, but I show you the result, what it means. Like if you take Daimler, it's like five, six times bigger in sales than Tesla. But the market cap is just a fraction of Tesla. And why? Because they believe in this Elon Musk a hundred times more than they believe in a manager. And you need outstanding people like Elon Musk or others in order. And look, when I looked at Tesla for the first time, 2010, I was, I, I was also negative about it. I said, well, this will not work. But look what happened now. And, and here we are too conservative in Europe because this is a future dividend. Is it 700 billion? But now what they will do, Tesla, they will do a capital increase of 10% and they just buy Daimler. And this is what we will see now the next couple of years. So we need more risk-taking culture. We, need, we have to give people a second chance. If somebody fails once, give him another chance. But we always say, oh, he already failed. You know? and, but in America, they say, hey, cool, he already tried. And then we should invest less in real estate because real estate doesn't really help people. So 
my observation is that we leave uh, a very difficult planet behind, um, uh, behind us. But what makes me still optimistic, because I'm investing at the moment almost every 10 days in a new company. Why? I think COVID boosted a lot this, uh, this system. It, uh, you know, I think we will have big opportunities in the B2B market because we have amazing entrepreneurs in Switzerland, in Germany, in Europe, like in, on the B2B market. And it brings really Europe closer to each other. And a lot of those topics are just starting. I mean, virtual reality is just starting. Big data, datification, it's just starting. Or AI is just starting. I haven't seen actually true AI companies yet. We talk about it, but I have not seen them. I mean, we talk about it, but it's difficult to invest into it. But all this, we are only 10% down the road of the digitalization. So 90% is still in front of us. And this is the reason why I'm so motivated to change things and uh, that we have a better uh, alternative. And everything was better in the past, even the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for